Well, hi YouTube. Normally you would see trains, either model trains or real live trains on my channel, but today we're going to do something a little different. This is a hobby I've had for, let's see, 19, I started, I was first licensed as an amateur radio operator in 1957. So that would be what, 64 years ago? So I've been into radio all this time too. And just recently I started restoring old radios. And this radio here I've had for probably 40 or 50 years. In fact, I don't even remember when I got it or who I got it from. It used to work, I used to listen to it. But in the last 20 or 25 years that I haven't, it's just been sitting, sitting around, hasn't been used. And in recently I, I restored it. Now I didn't restore it to look original or anything. I kept as much patina as I could. I uh, replaced all the old capacitors in it, tuned it up, and, and it looks halfway decent. Plays again. So in doing that, I discovered something. I discovered that I can receive old radio programs that really existed prior to uh, or, or just after this radio was built. This is a 1935 Silvertone. Silvertone was a Sears brand. Uh, it was manufactured by various manufacturers, RCA, Crosley, Zenith, and so on. They put the Silvertone name on it for Sears. So this is a 1935 ra radio. And I found out when I was fiddling around with it that I could get programs from 1935 on. It, in other words, it kind of acts like a time machine. And so I did a little research. I played with the circuitry and come to find out it has to do with quantum physics and quantum entanglement. If you have the original tubes, which this radio happens to have, the original 1935 tubes, if a program was played on this radio, it can be pulled out again. Now, it's not a time machine in that it can go back in time and find anything. It can only reproduce what it was tuned into. So if you didn't listen to it between 1940 and 1950, you're not going to get anything out of it from that period. But if you listen to a program, say, in uh, 1942 of, of, uh, of President uh, Roosevelt uh, giving the declaration of war after Pearl Harbor, and you listen to that broadcast, you can get, out of, get it out of here. And it has to do with quantum physics, quantum entanglement and fluctuation, and the electrons, whether electrons are a wave or a particle, and they're finding out that it seems not just photons are waves and particles, but other things like electrons and quarks also exhibit the uh, characteristics of being both photons and particles. So I built up a circuit in this radio to extract the electrons that are still floating in the original tubes that went through and are still here and someplace else in the universe now because they are paired up and we can pull them out. Now the problem is I have not developed a system where I can actually tune to a specific place and pull it out. Whatever you get is what you get. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is the radio has to be tuned to the frequency that the original program was on. And in this case, I have KGO 810 kilohertz in San Francisco tuned in right here because I used to listen to this years ago. KGO is a sports pro 
the station now. It used to be a talk radio station. I have not listened to a second. So I built a circuitry and I have a switch in the back that I can switch from the radio to what I call and what Al Jasbo Collins on KSFO used to call a majuberizer. He used to majuberize people on his show on KSFO after midnight. And the device that I have developed to extract those electrons is a majuberizer. And I have a switch in the back to turn the majuberizer on. Now to make it work, we tune the station in that we want. And as I said, we don't have any control over when we're going to tune in. But it will be at some time when this radio was listening to KGO. But one of the things that has to work with the majuberizer is we have to t give it a boost with the signal generator up here. So I have to tune the signal generator into 810. Wendy's new which I'm going to do. Every part. Unlike mornings, which have no good parts until now. Because with Wendy's and new breakfast Cinnabon pull apart, mornings finally don't come through. And there we are. And 810. Warm, so we're on 810 on the signal Ooh, generator. Are they the best part of every day? And oh, we've got KGO tuned in. Now I'm going to switch over to the majuberizer. And let's see what happens. As you know, summer is where we most people, that means more activity. Switch to the majuberizer and see what's going to take place. Mark in Washington, young KJ Great Tanya Farrell. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're speaking of the devil, right? Uh, you ever listen to Rush Limbaugh? Uh, not at all, sir. It's well, the Ray Talia Farrow show. I remember listening to this. This is and, a show uh, I listen to. Like Clinton, and, and he, this is almost a quote. He said, he called you an arrogant little twit who couldn't hold a candle to the big boys in a real debate. Had you heard he said that? Uh, not at all. But what I do know is Isn't that Sumble has been after my body for a long time, and he's been making these passes at me for years, and I have rejected him, as I would any fat slob. Isn't that something? We just picked up a broadcast from KGO probably in the 1990s, because that's when I used to listen to this radio, after midnight, actually, I'd get up at 4 o'clock because I had to be to work real early in the morning over at Siemens. And I'd listen to this while I was getting ready to go to work. And that's one of the programs that I used to listen to. Isn't that something? Wow. This is fantastic. Let's try another station. Let's see what else we can bring in. As I said, it can be any date from 1935 to... When I stopped using this radio, it was probably around 2000. So let's let's tune in. 3 a.m. KNBR. You went. Let's see. KNBR. Six. Six eighty. And catch a couple good college football Another sports station in the Bay Area, by the way. Remember who was that hit Aaron Rodgers and injured him on that play? KNBR. Now KNBR. He was. Yeah. He's now was before it was KNBR in 1958 it was KNBC and prior to that about 1947 it was KPO originally started in 1922 at the Hales Brothers department store in San Francisco and it was the NBC outlet in San Francisco so let's see what we can get if we majuberize this, I'll tune the signal generator to 680. Bleeping uh, problem yesterday. Jimmy Flavy said the F and then said, yeah, bleeping the Y. Yeah, I'm bleeping it. Yeah, we're tuning it in. We're going to leave that one alone for the time being. Yeah, I bet you he would even say he was D shit. How about this? Brock Purdy tonight? I just saw this. Is that throwing up the ceremony on first pitch? Is it? Yeah. Here we go. Careful, Brock. 680. Yeah, I'm going to say he'll make a good throw. He'll be fine. Okay. Will he, will he top Kaepernick? No. Kaepernick. So now, no. let's turn on the majuberizer. <laughs> throw a C through a C through a BB. I wanted to... And see what we hear. Ladies and gentlemen, we present genial Anson Weeks playing his opening selection in Peacock Court, Hotel Mark Hopkins, San Francisco. Now, Anson is going to say hello. Hello, live broadcast. Hello, everybody. We hope you're enjoying our tunes. Our next number will be Let's Fly Away. Wow. A live program. 
program from the Peacock Court at the Mark Hopkins in San Francisco on KPO. Who knows what year it is? It's probably about 1938, 39, maybe 45. Isn't that something? Wow! Isn't that wonderful? Now I'm going to be patenting this device. In fact, I've already been requested to go on Coast to Coast with George Norrie to talk about this because there's a lot of people who really understand this type of stuff because they're so scientific on that show. Uh, they've got a lot of astrologers and numerologists, very scientific people, and they will enjoy this tremendously. Well, all kidding aside, um, I did restore this radio, uh, not to its you know, original glory and beauty, but it's the patina. But when I restored it, I put a jack in the back. Well, let's turn it around here. I put a jack in the back as opposed to jack in the box. Let's see. Right here. And we have a Bluetooth device. <laughs> so we can play not only the radio, but we can play anything from the computer or the iPad or, or iPhone or whatever. So this old radio has a new lease on life and uh, it can play just about anything that you want to play through it through Bluetooth. So that's the key to the whole thing. Um, and I am restoring radios. This is the second one. I'm working on a third one right here. The first one I did was a, an old Admiral tabletop uh, that we got in uh, 1947 when we moved to Menlo Park. And I've restored it also. So I'm on number three. So if any of you have any old radios, send them to me. And I will rejuvenate them and majuberize them so that they can play old radio programs. Here we go. Shades of the RCA logo.